Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and today I have this really fun mini album for us to make. This is a step-by-step, start-to-finish mini album tutorial where we make this together. This is using the Chow Bella Aesop's Fables paper collection and I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. But finished size is about six and a half by about eight and a half and it came out super cute. Now on the cover I left it fairly simple and on the back and the spine and you can always add something extra if you want but the spine is about two and a quarter finish size and on this particular one I did not use any magnets so let's get into this. This is a really fun tutorial it's unique. When I designed this I designed it around the paper So each page is designed for each fable that was in the paper pack. Here on page one, we have the fox and the crow. And right up front, this fold out is going to give you the fable. And you can open it up, and there's a place right here to place a photo or photos, depending on your size. And when you open it up, you can place a photo here, but there's two pockets. Isn't that cute? And in the tutorial, we do make these folders. Now, I haven't added my decorated paper to this, and I haven't added all my picture mats, but you'll get an idea. And then we made this one in the tutorial. And then I just have a picture mat in there. So really cute. The hen and the golden egg is our next page. And we fold that out and there's a place right here for a photograph. Here's the fable. And you open that up and we have another place for photos. If you're using small ones, you can get a couple in there. If you're using a large one, one. Depends on your, phot your photograph sizes. Over here we have another place for a photograph and then here's a little tuck and this is designed just to place your photos down but if in case you wanted to use a picture mat place a photo you can also uh, layer in that in there. Let's go on to our next page. We have the grasshopper and the ant and right up front we have the fable. When we open that up we have a place to place a photograph. This is what we created, and it's a tuck. So we make these folders in the tutorial. And again, I haven't placed anything inside. This one has one, and we did that in the tutorial. But you can slide your picture mat back behind there as well. It just all slides back in. We come to the hare and the tortoise. And right up front, we have this, and we have a place for a photograph. We open it up, and we have another place, and we have this large pocket in the back. I have a little tag in there, and we make this folder together. And it has part of the fable here, and then the continuation of the fable, and a place right here to place a photograph. Here's a folder we made together. Going to our next page, this is the City Mouse and Country Mouse, and actually in the paper collection there were two prints, so the first print in the fable is over here, and then the story, I guess, con continues over here. So right up front we have this, and it flips down to give us a place to place a photograph. Here's the fable and the story and a place for a small photograph. We have a large fold out and I haven't matted these yet. And this opens up and we have all the space to place photographs. Over here we continue on with the city mouse and the country mouse and here's the fable up front. And you open it up and there's this large place for a photograph. 
Then we had made this in the tutorial, this folder, and there's a place right here to place a photograph. There's also a tuck, which you can tuck back behind. We move on to the fox and the grapes. And up front is our fable. We open it up and we have this large place for photographs. And we have this beautiful image with the morale. We open that up, another place for photographs. We have a large side pocket, and I have a tag in there. And then this is a folder that we make together. Coming to our last one, this is the lion and the mouse. Here's our fable, we open it up. We have a place right here for a photograph, and we can tuck it back behind this. This place right here is for a photograph. We open it up, and again, a place for a photograph. And then we have this pocket. And in the tutorial, we just make this small little folder for a small photograph. I have a tag, and then we make another folder that's larger. It's a really fun uh, album to make. It's, it's very unique. Well, let's move on into the materials list and get started. Let's go over the materials list for this album. You're going to need two of the Chow Bella Aesop's Fables paper packs, and these are the 12 by 12, and there are 12 double-sided sheets in each one of these. You're going to need some Tyvek, and Tyvek is just a material that's hard to tear. It's for our binding. I sell these in the large envelope, and you just cut strips. You're going to want three sheets of 65 pound white cardstock. This is for our album wrap. And these are 8.5 by 11 size. You're going to want a pack of the 110 pound white. I have the coordinations, premium cardstock, and this is for everything else our inner pages, flips, and pockets. Two pieces of medium weight chipboard and 12 by 12 size, and you, we can cut these down. It's on the pre-cutting guide so that we can get our chipboard covers and spine. You're also going to want to get the DBS, my Designs by Shelly, white frame. and We have a bunch of those in stock now. 3 8 inch and quarter inch score tape. You're going to want glue, and I am using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue, and you also want to just get this little metal tip here. You're going to need some bling on a roll. Now, I, I don't carry the single strand right now of the Doris because I can't get it. I do have some of the eight row one, which is like this, and that's perfectly fine because all we have to do is we can cut the mesh with our scissors to make a single row. This we'll use on our cover. You may want to grab out some of your binder clips or some clamps of some sort. It'll make your life easier when applying the bling to the frame. Other things that you're going to need to do this is you're going to want a scoring board, a paper cutter, ruler, scoring tool, bone folder. You're going to want scissors and you will probably want to have a craft knife handy and a pencil with an eraser. Let's get started. Let's start putting this together. Before we begin assembling, I do want to review the pre-cuts that we did off the pre-cutting guide that was a free download. So first off, what we did was we cut two pieces of six and a half by eight and a half chipboard and we called them cover. We also had a two inch by eight and a half piece of chipboard and we called that our spine. We had two pieces of Tyvek, which were one inch by eight and a half inches long. We cut, we had two pieces of 
65 pound paper that were eight and a half by ten and a half and we called that our album wrap. We also had a one and a quarter by ten and a half piece on 65 pound paper. We called that album wrap. We had a four inch by eight and a quarter inch piece, and this is on the 110 pound, the rest of this. And we called it our inner spine cover. We had two pieces we cut six and a quarter by eight and a quarter and we called those our inner covers and last we had three pieces and we labeled one of them and they're all the same and it was a six and seven eight by eight and a quarter and we called these our inner pages now what we did was we laid this on our scoring board so that we were six and seven eighths inch across at a half inch we scored on each one of these. Okay, let's start assembling. The first thing that we're going to want is our three pieces that were the album wrap. Yeah, we have two eight and a half by ten and a half, and we have that one and a quarter by ten and a half. So we're going to lay these so we are eight and a half inches across. We'll just stick this one right here for now. We're going to grab our quarter inch score tape. And we're going to lay a piece to the right on this one, just right along the edge without going over, because we're going to seam these together. Okay. Now on the left side of this one, on our eight and a half by ten and a half, we're going to go right here, right along the edge without going over. And let's cut off any score tape that peeks over. And one of the most important thing is that anytime we lay score tape, or even if we're using glue, we're always going to burnish down over it, especially on this score tape, to make sure it makes good contact and we get the air out from underneath it. Leaving air underneath our score tape can cause liftage. So we want to make sure that all that air is out so it doesn't spread. We're going to attach this to this, but I'm going to show you a way that's, that's easier to try and get these straight, because you do want to try and get these straight. I'm going to grab my paper cutter here. I'm not going to cut anything, but I am going to use this paper guide up here, which is going to keep me straight. So I'm going to grab one of these, and I have my score tape off to the right here. The craft knife is wonderful for getting that backing off of it. Now we're going to grab the one and a quarter by ten and a half, and we are ten and a half tall. So what I'm using this guide for is to keep this straight so that I can push this one up and if you get this a little off it's okay just go right on over that score tape and then that should help keep you straight. If it's a little off it's okay. So next we're going to grab this one and it has the score tape off to the left and we'll just remove that. We'll place that up against the paper guide. We will take this and we will overlap it over that score tape. And we will burnish. Perfect. So that is on. The next thing that we're going to grab is our two by eight and a half inch spine. And we're going to grab our score tape, and I'm using the quarter inch still. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges like a picture frame, all the way around without going over. Once you have it like that, what we're going to do is we're going to lay one piece down the middle, and we'll go one on each side.
We'll give it a burnish to get that down. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do before we actually do it. Now you can see your two seams here. And the idea of this is once I remove the score tape backing, I'm going to lay this over evenly and evenly top and bottom. So I'm going to have about an inch here and an inch here. And my two seam lines are running, hitting about right here and right here. You don't want the seam to end up over at the edge of the chipboard. So I'm going to remove this and we're going to place this. If you get this on a little bit crooked, that's okay. You just want to watch those seams for sure. Try to keep it as straight as you can. So I got that down, and I'll burnish on the other side in just a moment. Let's grab our two pieces of our cover, chipboard covers. And the first thing we're going to want to do is go around the outside like a picture frame on each one of these with your score tape. And I'm still using the quarter inch. The 3 8 I'll be using um, in other applications here soon. I have both of these done. Now whatever we do on this one, we're going to do the same on this. So first thing is we're going to go down the middle and we'll try to squeeze in about, oh I'd say a 2 on either side of that. Just kind of space them out. You don't have to be exactly accurate. Okay, we're going to give that a good burnish and we're going to do the same with this one. I have both mine completed. So now we're going to grab our album wrap again, what we've got going. When I remove the score tape backing off this, I'm going to make sure that this bottom is even with the bottom of the spine. But most importantly, you're going to leave a quarter inch spacing away from that spine. This is an album wrap style album where we're wrapping it, so you're going to need that spacing. So let's remove the score tape backing and then we will place this together. One thing about score tape, if you are new to making albums or using it, is that before you handle it, you do want to wash your hands, especially your fingertips, of any lotions and oils you may have on your hands. The reason why is because it will take away the potency of your score tape. Score tape is not forgiving and it's not meant to be, but it does help to do that. So I got that one down, and I don't want to get my head in the video, so hopefully I got that on pretty straight. I'm going to remove this one, and when we place this one, we're going to have that same quarter inch spacing. My stomach is growling for food. I didn't have any breakfast this morning. I need to go get something. So here we go, quarter inch. And when you do that, that should give you approximately about an inch of each side here. All right, we got that. Let's just turn that over and we're going to burnish. The next thing that we want is our Tyfec. And we have two pieces. They're one inch by eight and a half. And when we, we're going to place some score tape on this. And then what we're going to do is lay this over that valley there, that, that spacing. So I'm going to grab my quarter inch and I'm going to lay pieces on this. I'm going right along the edge without going over. And I'll go on this side. And I'll just go one down the middle there. If you get any wrinkles in your Tyvek, it's okay. It's not going to ruin anything because when we lay it down, it won't be seen after we cover it. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. 
Also, if you have seams, let's see if I have a seam here. I do. If you have a seam right here and it's bothering you, you can either clip it off or you can dab a little glue and just kind of tack it back down. That isn't going to hurt anything. All right, I am ready to lay my tie back. And I released the, the backing off of one, and I'm just going to stick that evenly over, lining up with the bottom and coming all the way to the top. Again, if you get this on crooked, it's not going to hurt anything. We do have a cover for it. So, and you can kind of go down that valley if you'd like. And we're going to do the same with the other one going right here. The next thing we're going to do is work on our piece. Again, we're using 65 pound, a lighter weight cardstock to wrap our album with. It seems to be easier for folding. So we're going to put our hand down on the chipboard and all we're going to do is kind of help it by folding over. Now you don't want to pull and yank it over. You just want to kind of go like this with your hands. Then what you can do is use your tool, whether it be you're using this style or you're using this one. It doesn't matter, but you're going to help it over. Okay, so you're going to do that. And we're going to do that on both sides and then we'll work on getting the, these up and over. Now sometimes you may experience when you've wrapped maybe some splits along your seam. And if you get that, I will help you with what we can do to fix that because it's really not that big of a deal. So usually it happens on seams. So we're going to start in the middle and we're going to gently kind of work it little by little. I'm going to turn mine to the side. It seems to be a little easier. Okay, we'll take our tool and help it along. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this side. Kind of comb it over. So once we do that, let's grab our score tape. Now on this one, I'm going to have us place the score tape rather than on the cardstock. I'm going to have us go all the way around on the chipboard at the edge. So I got that all the way around on my chipboard. The next thing that we're going to want to do is lay it on the cardstock towards the edge. Now on this, you don't have to go completely to the corner because we are going to be cutting off at an angle. So maybe leave about three quarters or a half inch away from your edge there. And just go along the edge of your paper all the way around. Coming around my last side here. Okay, now we're going to take a moment to burnish down all of our tape and then we're going to need our scissors. So I'm going to bring this up. You can see where the corner of your chipboard is. Now I'm going to cut at an angle. You do not have to measure how far over or whatever. Just kind of eyeball this. But the main thing is that you are going to leave one eighth inch away from the corner of your chipboard. So I'm going to do the best I can here, about one eighth inch away, so you can see where that is. And we're going to do that on each corner. Sorry, I'm all shaky today. 
So what we're going to do is first we're going to fold in the outside and then don't jump ahead by pulling this up. We do want to tuck in those edges down there. So I'll release here and here. Release down here. And I'll pull this back a little bit. And again, don't pull it over just because you've already done your thing over here by helping it. Just pull it over like that. Just push it over. And now we're going to burnish that down. Whoops, I got something on there. So we're going to take our tool and we're going to place a hand on this down here, like a finger, a hand here. The idea is you're going to come with your tool like this and you are going to push around like the corner to tuck that in a bit. Okay. Down over here, I'm going to release the score tape. So that side over there is all ready to go. And again, on this one, we just kind of fold it over. Now what we're going to do is just, I know it's kind of awkward for me, I'm right-handed, but I'm going to place my hand down so it's on this right here and one on my chipboard. I'll put my tool right here and I'll just round around the corner so that that kind of tucks in. Now we're ready to wrap the bottom up. and So what I like to do is go right like this, put a hand here, and press. And then I'll press it over like that. Okay. And there's my corner. And we'll burnish. And we're ready to do over here. So I'll place my hand down. We'll come around the corner. and we'll wrap up. Okay, I look good, but here's the thing. If you have a split, let me see if I can get that. Uh, it's not really split, but I think I tore up my paper a little there for you. But right here, if you get anything right by the seam, what you can do is dab a little glue. So figure out which way it's peeling up or whatever. You can dab a little glue, just a little bit and then take your finger and make it go the way it's supposed to go and then dab. Just dab a couple times, once or twice, and then leave it alone. That's what you do for that. So we have that done and just make sure that you burnish down really good here. And now we're ready to start getting our spine cover on. Don't bend it quite yet, we're not ready what we need now is the four by eight and a quarter inner spine cover. And we're gonna lay the score tape on the side that has the writing. And I'm gonna use my three eighths for this because it's wider tape. But this is a critical part of your binding for your pages. You don't want, when, you, when we do eventually pull these up, you don't want bubbling here from the, the page, the, your binding coming up. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to put our 3 8 inch all the way around like a picture frame and then we're going to lay strip by strip until this is completely covered. This piece then is going to lay evenly top and bottom so we have the same amount of space here and here right in the middle. And we'll be doing that together. So first things first. 
I'm going to get my score tape on here and then I'm going to show you. And you'll want to do it on the side you wrote on because that's going to go face down. If you get any score tape that kind of hangs over the edge, you'll want to clip that. When you're laying your score tape and you come to the last bit, I'm going to lay a piece a quarter inch in there and it's okay if it overlaps a little. This is also a critical piece because our page hinges are actually going to be sitting on the other side of this. So we do want to make sure we take the time to burnish this down really good. Here is my album. So now I'm going to release all the score tape. I'm ready to place this. Once again, I'm going to try and get that evenly over. And, I, and I'm going to leave the same amount of space here and here as best I can. So just try to get it straight. And we're going to burnish really good. You'll want to definitely take the time on this piece. And while you're burnishing, you may hear crinkling. And that is your score tape getting the air out from underneath and uh, making contact. Now we're going to fold up our sides. So the first thing I want you to do is place your hand down on your spine, place a hand under the cover, and gently start pulling it up. Now while you're pulling it up, if you start getting bubbles on that spine, you're going to stop and you're going to burnish. That is why I use score tape, it, because it all grabs rather than using glue. So I'm just going to go up slowly. And you're not going to pull it all the way over. These aren't meant to do that. You're just going to bring it up enough. And we'll place a hand here now. We'll get underneath and slowly do that again. So right now, your album may want to fling out, and that's okay. It's brand new, it's stiff, and it's, it's perfectly fine. We're ready to place our inner pieces, and again, if you see where some score tape needs to be burnished down a little more, get after it. Now what we want is our six and a quarter by eight and a quarter inner covers. And these are easy to place. We're going to place score tape on the side with writing. And you will be able to see, of course, your hinge here for your book. This piece is going to line up with your little spine cover, top and bottom. And you're going to place it. And you, you're going to be sitting probably about a quarter inch away from your hinge. And we're going to place that down evenly. So this is what your inside should look like. Something like that. So let's get the score tape on. And I'm using up the rest of what I had on this roll I had already started. I'm going to use my quarter inch and the first thing I'm going to do is go all the way around like a picture frame. And what I do on this one, I'll do on this one. So I went all the way around now what I'm going to do is one down the middle and a, two strips on either side. I have mine on. I'm going to burnish it in a moment, but first I'm going to turn it over and make sure I don't have any score tape peeking over the edges here that I can see. And I don't. So let's start to burnish and then we're going to place these together. I've got the score tape backing off and I'm ready to place mine. So I'm going to line this bottom part up, leave about a quarter inch, put this on as straight as I can, and that's good enough. If you get it a little bit off, chances are you are not going to be able to tell by the time you get your paper on top of this, your decorative paper and what's going on on there. I'm going to remove the score tape backing off this side now. 
and I'm ready to place it, lining it up again and trying to leave the same amount of space. All right, we have a nice little album clean. Let's get our inner pages in. So here is our six and seven eighths by eight and a quarter. And we're going to fold on those score lines and use our tool to sharpen up creases. So the first thing we're going to do with the peak up is grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And we're just going to lay it right in on this little flap hinge here without getting it on the peak or going over. 3 8 will fit right down in the center of that. And we are going to inspect each one to make sure if there's any score tape overhanging, we will get that off. And then we're going to burnish really well. Let's get the score tape on these. I have all the score tape down on my hinges, so I'm going to show you how we're going to do this first before we do it. Here's my flap. I'm going to release the score tape backing. I'm then going to rotate this so the sticky side is underneath. I'm going to pull this up, one side up. And this isn't hard to maneuver to get centered because the bottom of this is going to line up with the bottom of your white inner cover. So if I pull this up and I push this all the way up against the cover there while it's straight up, I line up the bottom, it's going to fit and it's going to be easy for me. And the other two are super easy. So I've got the backing off. I'm going to try to not get my head in the video, but I'm going to just place that, line that up as best I can, and then I'm going to use my tool to burnish this down really good. If you get it off a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Here's my next one, and this can't be simpler. So sticky side is down. Here's my hinge. I'm going to take this and I'm going to butt it right up next to this one. This one's down and I'm going to line it up with the bottom and I'm just going to press it. So they all fall in line really easy now. Here's this one. And I'm going to place it. Okay, so now when we close this, you will see we've got good spacing in between there. I'm going to erase this really quick before we move on to our next section, which is decorating the outside. What I would like us to do is label these. So this is number one for page one because it's like reading a book. Here's page two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight pages to decorate. We are now moving on to decorating the outside of our album. We're on to decorating the outside of our album, and there are no pre cuts. I'm going to set my album off to the side. The first thing I would like us to do is merge our paper packs. I think it's going to be a lot easier so that we have the same next to each other. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to get my papers out of here. And all I'm going to do here is place the same together. 
and I got these out of order. But anyway, I'm going to find the other one of these. It's around here somewhere. In case you were unclear, um, this is all I did. Both of them together merged. Okay, the first thing that we're going to start off with is the cover. So grab two of your covers, and the rest we will stick off into another pile. I got my cutting board out and on the covers. What we're going to do on this is we're going to put this on our paper cutter and we are going to cut right underneath the images straight down. I'm going to show you mine. So my blade is over here and I'm just going to, so I don't mess up the images, I'm just going to cut. So I'm going to bring this up so you can see. So notice I left the white on this half, and this we're going to put in our reserves. Our reserves is just our scrap pile. I call it our reserves because we're reserving to use it. And we're going to do the same exact thing on this one. Now we do have some cutting to do. I'm going to put that in my reserves. So first thing that we're going to do, and I try to stay consistent on how I tell you to measure. I'll always have us at least 99% of the time. I'll say start here and measure over this way. Now we may have to turn our paper so I can stay consistent and say measure over this way. But I just do that so I'm not telling you to cut up, in, down, all around. So it kind of keeps it so you can figure out what I'm doing. So our first cut, what we're going to do is we're going to measure over six and three eighths and cut. And that's probably going to put us on the other side of this line. So I'm going to show you six and three eighths. And again, my blade is over here and I'm going to cut. For now, put this piece in your reserves. Put this one off to the side for a minute. We're going to grab this one now. We're going to measure over six and three eighths and cut. And for now, we'll put this in our reserves. So we have the exact same cuts on both of these. We're going to double these up to make it easier. And both of my images are going the same way. We're looking at it this way. We're going to measure over 8 and 3 eighths and cut. So 8 and 3 eighths. These little pieces may seem like they are worthless. They may come in handy in the tutorial later on, so put these in your reserves. Put these off to the side. These are for our front and back covers. And now what I want to do is grab one of these out. Measure over one and seven eighths and cut. So one and seven eighths. I think that's good. And I'm going to put that back in my reserves. Turn it sideways, measure over eight and three eighths, and cut. Eight and three eighths. And this little itty bitty piece I'm gonna stick in my reserves. I'm gonna move this out of the way, and I'm gonna grab my album. What we're gonna do is grab one of these, and if you were to place this on your cover, it's going to give us a nice white border all the way around. And that's what we want. And I'm going to be having this down in the right hand corner. This one's going to be for our cover, so I may put more square tape on this one than the other one. So first things first, and we're putting it on this side, our score tape, is we're going to go all the way around like a picture frame. Next, we're going to go one down the middle and two strips on each side. I will be scribbling in a little bit of glue because we do have a frame to stick on top of this. 
I'll put my glue on as soon as I'm done burnishing and removing the score tape backing. I've got the score tape backing off. I am going to grab my glue and I'm going to scribble some down in between here because I do have that frame. Here is also something that might be helpful because once we start laying this down, score tape's not forgiving. So if you want a little bit of wiggle room, you can do a shot of glue at the top so that you can lay the top first and then maneuver. I like to do mine when it's closed, but we're just going to do the best we can here. And then I'm going to burnish this, and I'm going to open this up to do that. Let's grab our score tape for the back piece. We'll go all the way around like a picture frame to start. I'll go one down the middle. And because there's nothing heavy on this, I'm just going to put score tape one strip on each side of that. And I can always scribble in some glue if I want. I'm going to inspect this. I think I did get score tape over the edge, and I did. So I'm just going to kind of check it out. Looks good. I'm going to burnish this down, remove my score tape, and I might squiggle a little glue in between there. Okay, I'm on the back, and I'm going to kind of look to see how much of a spacing I left up there. I think this is good enough. The next is our spine, and what we're going to do here is we're going to lay this evenly, top and bottom. Try to match up the top of your paper with how where it would land from the top of this. I'm going to first lay my score tape all the way around like a picture frame. Once I have that, I'm going to put two strips, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball that to get them in there. And I'll burnish that. Again, if you would like to squirt a little bit of glue at the top so that you can maneuver it, do so. So I like to hold mine up. If you would prefer to open yours up, you're going to want to look where those hinges would fall to get that on there. I like to have mine closed when I do this. That looks good. I'm going to set this off to the side. And next we're going to work on our frame and we need our bling for that. Now on your bling on a roll, you'll have several rows. What you'll do is just cut straight up on one of your rows to release a single strand. 11 inches will go around this frame of mine. So I've got that, 11 inches. And next thing is, is I'm just gonna go in and uh, if I have any of the mesh kind of sticking out the side, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit by clipping it off. So this is, pro it's easy, but this is something that you're gonna wanna have patience with. If you have no patience today, I would stop and come back when you do. So this, my friends, patience are needed because we're going to be gluing this around this. Now I'm going to be using my art glitter glue. I've done this before and I know it holds it. You can use E6000, you can use whatever adhesive you know that will glue this down to uh, resin, a plastic. The thing with Art Glitter Glue though with this is it does take time to dry and you're going to need your clamps or binder clips. The more binder clips or clamps you have, the, the merrier we're going to be. But if you only have one or two, that's fine or maybe a heavy book. But um, the book method is not uh, the best, I will say that. So I'm just going to continue cleaning this up. That's good enough. 
So I am going to be putting very thick and then I can clean it up all the way around and I'm just going to put this much for now. And I have what I need. The reason why I clipped off 11 inches, I can always trim off a little bit, but it's easier than having the roll attached, especially when there's so many rows of bling. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here at the top. And I'm going to use my clamps. By the way, if uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about where I got these. Many years ago, my husband found these on eBay. And I think they're called Wolf Craft. And they're, they're just like a ratchet clamp. And I find they come in handy when I'm doing albums and stuff like this. So I'm just going to keep going around and clamping this. And as it starts to dry, I can always check on these. So I'm going to keep going around and clamping. So I have a ton of clamps on these. I don't have wide binder clips, so I am just kind of moving them around and clamping down. And I'm going to let this sit now. I know this looks so weird, but um, it will help. And I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes. Every now and then I'm going to tap down with my finger and make sure it's down and I can also move my binder clips around or my clamps actually to make sure it gets down. So I'm going to leave that alone. Again, patience and it will get down for you. Our next step is you have this image and I did cut mine but what you want to do is divide these two then what you're going to do is take your frame and you're going to place it over your image and you are going to draw around on the inside lightly. Now when you cut that out, you're going to leave about a quarter inch away from that line. So you're going to cut out and around not on the line. The line is going to provide you on the outside what you need to glue to the back of the frame. So you'll cut on the outside about a quarter inch away from that and then what you can do is just place this down, line it up with your line and maneuver it Whoops, to how it should be. And you can always erase any pencil lines that you might have. Next thing we're going to apply glue to the back of our frame and our piece. And we're going to place it on the front cover. So open it up, make sure you're not upside down. And we're going to center it on there as best we can. And I think that's pretty good for me right there. So I'm just going to open this up now, lay it down, make sure I press down the image on the inside and my frame. If you have any glue seeping out the sides, you can clean that up. This piece that we cut off can go back in our reserves as well as the little cut apart there. Mine's already grabbing. Now I do want to try something. If it doesn't look good, then, then uh, we won't use it on the cover. But on this piece in your paper pack, you will see the mouse. Now we're going to cut in from the side and just what we need. So just going to come around and get what I need here. And we're going to take a look. I'm not sure this will look good on the cover, but we'll do it. And if it doesn't, we'll save it for inside the album. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna cut out and around this whole image. And I'll show you what mine looks like as soon as I'm done. This is what mine looks like. And you don't have to be a good fussy cutter to do this. But we do need to back this with some of our paper to stiffen it up a bit. So what we're going to do is grab some leftover 110 pound cardstock from when we were cutting our pre-cuts. And we are going to glue it down. And then we're going to cut out and round it, leaving a little bit of a white border. The tricky part is this tail. So if your tail comes detached, you can just glue it back on or any of these pieces before you cut out and round it. I'm going to be real careful with that tail and up through here. Okay, next thing, I'm going to cut out and around, leaving a little bit of a white border. And again, you don't have to be perfect. I will show, it, show you what mine looks like in just a moment. I finished fussy cutting around mine, and I'm going to show you. I get this camera to stop shaking. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So I'm going to give this just a little bend. And I was thinking that this might look super cute on the cover, halfway on, and something like this. So this I'm going to be gluing down, and to make sure I get all the points that need to be done, I'm going to just put glue all over this. I'm going to go with it. If you don't like it, you can just leave the frame or do something else. But definitely want to get those places where it's thin, like on the tail, thinner. Because those are really going to be uh, glued down. So I'm going to take a look here. And I think right about here. I'm going to get that down. And I'm definitely going to get this tail to glue down. And then I'm just going to push it over off to the side. Get the tail. And I'm just slowly working it so that these pieces will glue down. So it's kind of curved around this. There is one place right over here I need to get a little more glue. And I want to get underneath him a little better on the edge. So I'm going to press him down just a little bit more. And you can still see the turtle and the hair. And I don't think this is going to reach in there. So I'm going to have to hold that for a moment. I have everything down. And that is looking really good. So for now, decorating the outside is complete. If I want to come back and add something along the back or the spine or even up front, I can do so at the end of the tutorial or sometime in between there. One thing about this is that in this paper pack there are eight fables. And if you notice, we have eight pages. So let's move on to page one. We're on page one and we do have some pre-cuts. We're gonna go over those really quick. On your pre-cutting guide under page one section, we cut two pieces that were five and a half by eight inches. And what we did on each one of these is we laid this on our scoring board. So we were five and a half inches across. We scored at a half inch and five eighths inch on each one of these, and we labeled them fold out. Next, we cut two pieces that were four and a quarter by five and three quarter. What we did on each one is we laid this on our scoring board, so we were four and a quarter across. We scored at a half inch. Then the instructions said we were going to turn it so that we are now five and three quarters across. We scored at a half inch and five and a quarter. 
and we labeled those pocket. Next, we had two pieces of cardstock. We cut them at five and a half by eight and a half. We did call them our folder. What we did on each one is we laid this on our scoring board so we were eight and a half inches across. We scored each one at four and a quarter, right in the middle. We had one more pre-cut and that was three and nine sixteenths by four and five eighths and we just called that a mat. Okay, so because this paper is so unique and it's telling a story, some of our story is not lining up with the whole image. So I designed this album around the paper pack and we're going to get the most out of our paper. So I have a bunch of lines on my paper right now and we'll get to that, but we're going to need our ruler and we're going to need our pencil and we'll write lightly on our paper just so we can see it because we do need to see the lines that we create. And then I can give you a tip on, on how to line up your lines, make sure they're straight, if, if you can. So the first thing I would like you to do is lay your ruler down so that it is four and five eighths. If you're using my ruler, make sure that you're, you know that the end of your ruler here would be a zero. That's the end point. It starts at zero and then it goes on over. So at four and five eighths, what I would like you to do is come to the top, line it up, and I want you to make a little pencil mark, just like that. The next thing I would like you to do is on the bottom here, I want you to measure up three quarters and put a pencil line. That should put you right underneath this gold little trim right here. Now, and I want you to put your ruler underneath the, the pencil line that you made and you're going to measure out four and five eighths and make a pencil line. It, here is something that's really easy. If you have this style of cutter, I'm going to show you it, something. Get your blade out of the way. And I'll show you with the other traditional style cutter where you can actually lift your blade and all that. We're not going to cut right now. What we're going to do is maneuver this under our, under our paper guide here, under the protection thing. We're going to come over and we're going to line up the pencil line that we made next to this plastic guide. Then what, and make sure you're straight. Then you can draw your line all the way down to that point down here that you made your little thing. You can then, to make sure your straight is going this way, is draw your line. Just be right next to this guide. Make sure it's lined up with that and you draw your line. The next thing I want us to do once you do that, oh, I wanted to show you on the other style paper cutter that you can do really quick to help you with lines. I'm going to remove my little thing here, get it flopped over, see if I can't get this to do. I'm going to move this out of the way, my little cutter. But what you might be able to do is line it up so your pencil, when you put your pencil down next to this guide, straight up and down, you can use that to draw your line as well just by doing it like that or even an easier way is come over to this side line it up next to this guide so that when you put your pencil down it's right on your pencil line and then you can draw that way okay that might be the easier way there we have one more so I'm going to put mine out sideways. We have our line this way and we have a line here. What you're going to do from this line that we created is you're going to measure up seven and seven eighths and make a pencil line. I'm going to grab mine here so I can get a straight line. And from that line I know that if I put my pencil on on this, it's going to do straight. 
Okay, I don't have the type of cutter that will allow me to lift this and place it down. So if you're working on a cutter like this, you've got to be really careful. My first cut is I'm going to go down and I'm going to stop right here. Everyone needs to get this on your cutting. Make sure you're lined up with your blade. And we're going to cut that. And go very slow, especially if you're working on this, you're going to have to look underneath to see where your blade is without going over. Okay. So I'm going to grab this out carefully. Next, I'm going to cut this way very carefully. and it's gonna release that for me. And I feel it release. So now I'm gonna, we still need this, but we're gonna stick this off to the side. I'm gonna cut on this line. These two pieces, we're gonna stick off to the side. We need them. Matter of fact, we're gonna be needing this whole thing. I'm going to move this. It'll be easier for you to see. Whoops. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is down here, we're going to place our ruler and we are going to measure over four and five eighths and make a pencil line. Okay. Now from the top down, we're going to measure down eight inches and make that pencil line. So I'm going to grab this back out so I can get straight. So the first one I'm going to do is the 8 inches and I will make my pencil line. The next one will be the down this way and I'm going to get this up against my paper guide and I'm going to draw. So now what I'm going to do is first cut this way, and I apologize that there's cuts like this, but this is I, my this was the way that when I was looking at the get the most out of our paper in order to get the story, this is what I did. So there's one. We're not quite done with this one, but that's okay. Let's get this how we need it. And now I'm going to cut up this way. This little piece we're going to stick in our reserves for right now. This one we're going to stick off to the side. Turn your piece upside down. We're going to start our measuring. Remember I start over here and go over. So we're going to measure over six inches and cut. This little piece right here, we are going to stick in our reserves. We'll get at it after a bit. We have some pieces to start, and I don't want to overwhelm us with too many pieces. We'll get the rest as we go. This is our main back page. This is six by eight. Grab one of your foldouts, and we're going to have the hinge off to the right to start, and we're going to fold on those score lines. And you'll want to use your tool to help you. So our hinge is going to be out on the right here. You have an outside score line and an inside. On the outside one, I'd like you to pinch and crease that all the way down. Oops, I got some pencil on there. So you'll still be able to see your other score line. What we're going to do is take this and wrap it around to the back side over here. It'll just slide right on. And you'll line that up top and bottom all the way in so you can see. We're going to pinch and place it down and keep your fingers down so it doesn't slide. I like to hold it down with a hand and carefully pull this out. 
So if you were to slip a little when you were doing that, start over so you can get a get a good even fit there. Now we're just going to apply our glue right on this flap. Don't get too close to your hinging. Just enough. And we're to fold that over and we'll use our tool to burnish. Every time you do that, one of these hinges, you want to open it up to make sure no glue seeped out from when you were putting it on there. So now what we can do is just fold back on that other score line and push until it feels kind of flat and even over there. We're going to get our other fold out and this time the hinge is off to the left. So if you're sitting upside down with your print or something, you might want to erase it so it doesn't confuse you uh, when assembling this. So we're going to get this one on. This will get covered, so I mean, you're writing. Okay, hinge off to the left. We have an outside score line and an inside. On the outside one, we're going to going to press and crease. We'll still be able to see the other one. And we're going to put this one over the other. Make sure it lines up. That looks good. We'll pinch, flip it over. And I'm going to make sure that this is accurate. That looks pretty accurate there and I'm going to glue this hinge down. Now, once your glue sets and you've checked to make sure there's no seepage, we'll push back on the other one and then push in so it makes it flat and that's going to give us our spacing on each side. Okay. We're going to begin, we're going to be on so here's our image. We'll fold in the left and we will fold in the right. This piece here, we're going to start it, our page, with this one. And this is about seven and seven eighths, and I think that that will fit nicely on there. I think that looks good. The idea of what we're trying to do is so that when we place this on here, we're going to be centering this side to side so we'll have some white border okay and top and bottom we should have be able to see our white border now for me this is pretty tight fit if I was to center this a little bit I barely see my white so I might want to come and trim about a sixteenth of an inch off right here and I think I'll do that and you can too if yours is so now I'm going to, whoops, put this back, lay this down, and I have a better fit with the, the white border. So I'm going to glue this down. This is our first piece to the story, first right off what we see of the fable. And again, this goes on the outside of the right hand one. I'm going to center that as best I can. Now once you get it where you want it, you can open this up so that you have a flat surface to burnish. We're going to open this up and we're going to get both our pockets ready to go. We do need to get our paper for the inside and also here. But I'd like us to set this off to the side and we have two pieces here. One the, the one that says Fox and the Crow, that is about three and three eighths. This one is at four inches. We will be cutting this down. So we're going to grab our pockets. If you notice, we have score lines here, here, and you'll have a score line going across the bottom. In the corner, it makes a square. We want to clip out that square. on each side.
we're going to do it with this one too. Next we're going to flip them over and we're going to fold on those score lines. With your sides in, if you pull down the bottom flap, we're going, to pe we're going to be putting glue down in the corner. Now when you put glue down in the corner, if you're new to this, is you see when you pull in the side how far over this goes? You don't want to be putting glue on the other side of that. So I mainly stick just right in the little corner there. You pull in the sides, push up the bottom, and we're going to burnish those down. Here I'm going to do that again. I'll bring it up a little closer. Just dab a little glue here. Dab a little glue over here. And we're going to pull in. I don't think you can see that. Let's grab our fox and the crow. If we were to place this down all the way at the bottom, it'll leave a white lip at the top, and that's fine. But we want to center that side to side so that we have white showing on each side. We're going to glue this down. And then we're going to burnish that. We'll get our other piece to go across in just a moment. So for this one, we're going to lay it down and we will center that side to side. The idea is we want to leave a little bit of a white lip. We'll place that down and we'll still be able to see where the bottom of that pocket is and we will just make a pencil mark and now we know where to trim to get this to fit. So I'm going to trim that really quick. And remember the opening is at the top, this is at the bottom. And now I'm going to place this. That's going to fit now. And if you see any pencil lines, definitely erase them. That piece that you cut off from this, grab it. And we're just going to glue that right on the top of this pocket and that'll leave a little bit of a white for us. So you can use the wood grain if you would like, that looks good, or you can flip it over to get a little color. And I'm gonna get a little of this green color there because we'll be using some wood from our other sheet. And we'll burnish. So our pockets are done, we're gonna set those off to the side and we're going to grab the paper that's needed to get for the inside panels here. You have another one of these. On the back it's the wood grain. And I'm going to get my paper cutter out because we will be doing cuts together for this first page. And then you'll by then understand if I'm just telling you to measure. So what we're going to do with this is we are going to turn it sideways. We're going to measure over seven and three quarters and cut. So seven and three quarters and I'm going to cut. This piece you can put in your reserves for right now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this upside down. So we're looking at it upside down because I do want to retain something over here. We're going to measure over four and five eighths and cut. We're going to measure over four and five eighths again and cut. So four and five eighths. And I'm going to measure over again four and five eighths. 
For now, stick this in your reserves. Flip these two over. You will notice that each one of these now, if you center it in there, are going to fit. And when I say center, you're going to have your white border over here, and you're still going to have a white border. You're going to see two your score lines. You're going to see the one that is on the outside, and you're going to want to keep a white border away from that. So when you center it, you should probably have maybe an eighth of an inch away this your decorated paper from that. And then we'll just center that top and bottom. So we won't be doing picture mats together, but we will be doing some folders together. Getting those ready. So I'm going to center that, make sure I have my spacing away from that score line. Same goes with this one and you should be able to fit that in there, have your spacing, and we're going to glue that down. I'm going to glue it to where this is at the top. Now we're going to get our pockets on, and again your opening of course is at the top. These are always at the bottom because that's the bottom of your pocket. We're going to be gluing those down and getting them right there so it can hold our picture mats. Also this area here is great for a photograph. So we're going to get that on there. I'll bring it down to the bottom of my decorative paper and over and I'm going to push until it's somewhat even. You're not going to want a big gap or anything but you're just going to want to make sure that you don't go over the edge of your paper over here and you're not in on your score line. So there's one pocket and now we're going to get this one on. We're almost done with this page. It won't be much longer. So I'll bring the edge of this over to the edge of my white cardstock without going over. This one, and you have this, so we'll look at it like this because we're going to retain the little fox just in case we need that. We're going to measure over seven and seven eighths and cut. So I'll just bring this here. Seven and seven eighths. And I'll put that in my reserves for right now. The next piece from your reserves will be this this cutting. We're going to open this up, and we're going to place this down so that we still have a white border. This one we're going to lay right on top, but we do need to trim this one down. So we're going to measure over seven and seven eighths and cut. So I trim mine down. Now what I want to try and do is just get a little bit of color on that. That should match us up. And so when we have our piece, we see this and we still have some color and room to place a photo. So we're going to lay this down. There we go. Now I'm going to burnish really good. Okay, I'm going to take glue and I'm going to glue this down. A little bit of a white border over there. Match it up and burnish. Let's close this up and we'll set this off to the side. Let's grab our two folders and we're going to fold on those score lines. In your paper pack you will have another one of these. This is the one that has no cutting on it. We're going to turn that sideways. We're going to measure over five and a quarter inches and cut. And we got five and a quarter
and I'm going to put this piece in my reserves. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure over four inches and cut. We'll measure over again four inches and cut. So in order to get this in the video, I do have to have this half hanging out here off the table. So four inches. There's my first one. And I'm going to measure over four inches again. This piece we'll put in our reserves. So I think you kind of have the idea now of how I measure, tell us to measure, unless it's something we need our pencil and our ruler. So we're just going to decorate the outside later on if you want. You can place decorative paper if there's enough left to go on the inside or solid colored cardstock. So our opening on each one is over here. Each one of these we can center on this piece and glue them down. So let's do that really quick. Okay, so we have this piece. This is the one where we cut out the mouse for the cover. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in and weave around to cut out the box. So there's one. We also have this image left in our reserves and we're going to cut the fox out. I'll just put that right back in my reserves. So on each one of these, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out and around, and we also, on this piece, need the feather of the crow. So let's cut out and around each one of these images. I have all three of mine done. Now I lost the whiskers on this one, I just couldn't do it. I do have some on him. And for the feather, I just took the shortcut and just kind of went around it. So I think what we're going to do, and we're not, and I don't think that we really need to back it. I think the image is quite vibrant. But we'll glue the fox down right here on this one. Make sure his tail stays on there. We'll just kind of put that down. Now I wanted to do, now that I have these over here, I wanted to do something different. So here's our mat, and we are going to glue this down to one. And we're going to center it on here as best we can. In your reserves, you will have this. What I'd like us to do is just measure over three and a quarter inches and cut. After doing that, it'll look like this. I'd like you to center that right on in there. Now the fox, we're gonna actually need to glue down to some white cardstock, and then we'll cut out and around him So I'll cut out and around him in just a moment. The feather I'm not going to back. And there's a reason why the fox, because he will become a, he'll become a, uh, kind of you can slide a photo back behind him. So I'm going to cut this out really quick, and then I will place it. And I'll show you mine before I place it. Here's my fox. So I'm going to glue him down right over here, and all that's going to get glued down is underneath here and down here. So I'm going to flip them over. I'll get here and over. So you can still get a photo slid back behind. In your reserves, you will have this piece. What I'd like us to do is stick this on our paper cutter, and we're going to cut straight over. Doing that, we'll put this out of the way so this can be used for something later. Now what we're going to do is just kind of cut up and around this. Let me cut off that little bit. And we're going to glue that down right there. 
We're not going to back this. I don't think it needs to be. All right, let's get our pieces. Let's see how that looks. Get that in there. That looks good. On over here. And that looks good. And we have room here for photo. We have room here. We have two places inside our folders to place photos and we can also get some in there. Now I didn't use any magnets on this and uh, I don't think I am going to use magnets in this album. I didn't call it out in the, the materials list. So here we go. We're going to just close it up and flip it over. We're going to grab our quarter inch score tape and we are going to go around the back of this like a picture frame. Once we have that, we are going to go one down the middle and we're going to get in two strips on either side. We'll place this in our book as soon as we are finished with page two. It's easier sometimes to line up doing page two before the page one. So we'll burnish this and then what we're going to do is we will set this off to the side. We are now on to page two. We're on page two and we're going to review some of our pre-cuts here. The first one we had was a five and three quarter by eight inch. We called it a right fold out. So on this one, our scoring, what we did, I'm going to turn mine upside down here. We laid this on our scoring board so we were five and three quarters across. We scored it at five inches and five and three sixteenths. So you may have had to grab your ruler and measure over to five and three sixteenths, make a pencil mark, and then line up your line and then you would score. So five and then five and three sixteenths. Our next one that we had was a five and a half by five and seven eighths and we called it a left fold out. We laid it on our scoring board so we were five and a half inches across. We scored at a half inch and five eighths inch. Our next one was a four and seven eighths by six inch. We called it our top right fold out. We laid this on our scoring board so we were four and seven eighths across. We scored it at a half inch and seven eighths inch. In your paper pack, let's grab this and we're going to turn it sideways. Measure over eight inches and cut. Once you do that, this piece will go in our reserves. Our next cut, we're going to measure over six inches and cut. Place your other piece in your reserves and we're going to flip this over and we're going to use this as our base. First pre-cut that we want to do is we want our five and three quarter by eight inch. You have an inside score line and an outside one and you will want to fold first on those score lines. On the outside score line we're going to pinch and crease. We'll still be able to see our other one and we're going to hook that back behind. Make sure it's lined up. We'll pinch. We'll fold it over. Keep our hand down and then we're going to glue this flap over. Let's open that up. Make sure we don't have any glue seeping out and we'll fold back against the other so that we can fill with our finger. It's flat there. The next one we want is the four and seven eighths by six inch top right fold out. So that just means this fold out goes to the right and it's on top. So we're going to fold on those score lines and we'll attach this one. 
So, these so on something like this, what you want to do is we already folded so we have that spacing. Push down on it. We'll still be able to see that other score line there. We're just going to flatten that out. That's going to help us get this one on. So we have that, and I'm going to kind of crease it so I can see my other one. And I'm going to place it over the other one, and I'm going to try and get that with about even in there somehow. And I'm going to flip it over. Now, while you're holding it, open it up. Make sure that your score line looks fairly even there, straight up and down. And we're going to place some glue and fold it over. Whoops. Okay, now what you can do is fold back against that one. You can fold back against that one, and it should lay nicely over it just like that. Let's get our other fold out on and this was our left fold out. We're going to fold on those score lines. Sometimes these score lines can be pretty pesky there. I'm trying to get it on nicely on that line. So just do the best you can. Okay, on the outside score line we're going to pinch and crease and for this one, we'll hook it on, try to get it in the center. We'll pinch, hold, and glue this down. Whoops. We'll open that up, make sure we have no glue seeping, and then we'll fold back, push back on that other one. So this is how it's going to lay for us very nicely. Let's get some of our pieces down before we cut into our other pack. Let's open this up and we're going to go to the inside here. In your reserves you have this piece here. What I would like you to do is measure over to seven and three quarters and cut. Once you've made that cut, turn this upside down. We might be able to use this measure over four and three quarters and cut. Okay, so we are actually going to flip this over to this side and the reason being is on our other one I'm going to get this center just a little bit more to get the hen in on our other cuts but we're gonna take care of what we got going here. So we're gonna place glue because we want to be able to have places for our photographs. Okay, we'll center it in there, make sure we have a border, we're away from that. And we will burnish. Let's close that and open it up to this. In your reserves you will have this piece. We're going to turn that upside down, measure over five and three quarters and cut. This is what we have. We'll turn it this way. Measure over three and three quarters and cut. This is what you should have and it should fit right on in here without getting on your score line giving you a nice border. Okay, we're going to close that up. In our paper pack we will have this. What I would like you to do is put this on your paper cutter and we're going to cut to divide these from these. And I'll show you mine. This is all I did. Now comes the easy part. We'll put this on our paper cutter and we will cut in between to divide these two. This is the one that we want. Now place this on your paper cutter and cut off any of that white so that all we have is this nice panel. And I'll show you mine in just a moment. So when I'm done cutting, there is no white border. Hmm, I have a little down here. I'll trim that off. But the idea is to just kind of get what's needed. This will fit right on top and center in there. And that's what we would like to get that down. This one's done. Now we're going to cut for this. In your 
paper pack you will find another one of these. We're going to turn it upside down. We're going to measure over four and three quarters and cut. So this is what you should have and we can get that in there but we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. What I would like you to do is right underneath where it says golden egg and you have that swirl and I'll show you we're going to make a pencil line there just right underneath. I'm going to stick this on my paper cutter and I am going to cut. So that's what that's going to do. Next, and hold off on that because we'll use that. Measure over seven and three quarters and cut. Now we have a nice image that has this rather than being cut off. So we're going to center that in on top of this panel and we're going to glue that down. What we're going to do with this is I'd like to stick this right here. So what I'm going to do is stick this on my paper cutter, but first I'm going to go place my ruler down just above the word the. And I'm not sure if you can see that. Placing my ru ruler right there just above the the. And I'm going to make a little pencil line. Now I'll stick this on my paper cutter. So that is what I have. Now what I'm going to just kind of do is make a line over on this side. I'm going to keep my ruler on this side of it so I can kind of get my image to have about the same amount of space there on each side of the words. So I can give you a measurement really quick if you'd like. So as you can see, I placed a line here and a line over here. And if you'd like, you can measure over to 5 eighths and make a pencil line, if that helps. And then, still having it lined up, 3 and 1 eighth. So we'll cut. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this, get any pencil marks off. We're going to glue it down to a piece of white cardstock because we're going to make this stand out a bit. You'll want to leave about a sixteenth inch of white border around it. So I kind of stick mine up at the top there. And then as you can see about sixteenth up here. So now I'm going to put this on my paper cutter and cut around so I still have that sixteenth border down here. And you don't have to be absolutely accurate but I think that this is going to sit right here and it will fit in there. So I'm going to glue this down. This is just raising it up a little, kind of framing this and it looks good. And you'll not want to go over the edge, of course. I'm lining mine up with the side of my decorated paper. Okay, we are over here, and in your reserves, you should still have this. We're going to turn it sideways. We're going to measure over five and five eighths and cut. This is what you should have after your thing. We're going to make ourselves a nice little border here. So, what I want you to do is lay this down and we'll use our pencil and we will just make a pencil mark here and a pencil mark here and I can give you the measurement if you would like if you would like you can measure over 3 eighths and make a pencil mark and then you can make a pencil mark at the 5 inch mark and then that should give us something that is going to fit right on in here. This would be your final piece. We will center that and glue it down. 
We still have a couple things to do before we are done, but we're going to open that up. In your reserves you will have this print, and what we're going to do is turn it so we're looking at it like this. I still need to get this and I don't want us to cut on that. We're going to measure over four and five eighths and cut. These two pieces set this one off to the side. We are going to look at it like this. We'll measure over five and five eighths and cut. Flip it over. This piece should fit right on in there. So we've got plenty of places to place some photos in there. On the cut apart sheet that we've been working on, we are going to grab this. And it looks like the cheese is going to possibly get cut off. Maybe not. I can manage it so I can keep that there in case I want it. Let's cut out and around the hen. And I'll show you mine as soon as I'm done. So pretty much what I'm going to do, because I do want to use this as a tuck, so I'm not going to cut down on this white. I'm just going to keep going up and around. And over here, in case you want to get started, I'm just going to kind of weave it up so that I still have something down here, as you can see. Okay, and I'll show you mine when I'm done. Once you are done, this is what I came up with. We're going to glue this down to some white cardstock. We're then going to cut out and around, leaving a white border, because we do need to stiffen up this piece a bit. So let's do that really quick. I've completed mine. It's not perfect by any means. But I think I would like to place this right here so that in case I wanted to place a photo here and maybe a picture mat back behind, I can tuck maybe a little one. So underneath, I'm going to get it right at the little edges of the tail and right along the bottom. So the tails and the bottom. Whoop. Make sure your tail does not go over the side of your decorative paper. So I am just going to maneuver this the best I can. Make sure that tail gets down. Next, we are going to stick this one on our paper cutter and we are going to at the side of our little sentiment, our little uh, moral, we're going to put this and cut down this way and I think I'll go to the edge over here and cut here. So I'll show you mine. And I can cut this down even more if I wanted. But I'm just going to use my scissors now. And I might shorten up this side a little to make it look a little better. And let's take a look. That's that. That's that. And I think our little sentiment would look really good right there. Not sentiment the moral of the story. And I'm going to place mine right here. And I think that that looks wonderful. There's nothing else that I really want to add to this. I don't think it needs anything. So in, in, in. Looks great. Let's flip it over because we're going to place this in our book and we're also going to place page, page one. Let's grab our quarter inch score tape and we will go around like a picture frame to start and we'll do the same thing. Since there's a lot of uh, fold outs on this, we'll go around the edge and then we'll go one down the middle and two on each side. And then I will show you how we're going to place these. Here's the back of mine. I'm going to burnish it here in just a moment. But I want to show you this and make sure my fold out's working. Here's our page two, and I'm going to grab something to stick back behind so you can see it better. Let's see. 
that will work. Put a piece of scratch card stuff. And that might help you as well for seeing everything. But what I'm going to do is I'll remove the score tape backing. Then I will bring this, the side of my thing, all the way over my page. And that should leave me with about maybe three-eighths to a quarter inch away from this hinge. But I do want to center this top and bottom. Okay, make sure that your page does not go over the edge. And I'm going to burnish really quick and then I'm going to remove my score tape. I've got my score tape off. This is an excellent time to squirt some glue so you can maneuver it. And I'm going to try to get mine on as even as I can without getting my head in the video. So I'm actually going to start over here because we are pretty thick. I'm going to line that up, make sure I'm not going over, make sure it's straight, and place it. And once you've like got it down a little bit, you can open this up and now you burnish really well. And if you get it on just a little bit crooked, it's okay. Chances are no one's going to notice this and you'll be just fine. So there's that, there's that, there's that. And now it's time to get this one in. Now the reason why, oh I got stuff on mine. The reason why I I tell you to go ahead and put your page two in first is because the chipboard cover is larger than our inner pages. And if we can get this one in semi-straight, we can see where our page hits so that we know how to line this up on our board so it kind of looks like they're even along the top. This particular one, we are going to come all the way over and leave just a little bit of an edge and that will keep us at least a quarter inch or so away from our hinge. So I'm going to remove the score tape backing and we will plant this together. It is very hard for me to get my stuff when I'm filming unless I put my head in the video and you're not going to see anything. So I'm going to kind of look here to see where I need to be as far as down and hope that I get this on straight. So I'm going to just kind of a little low. I think right here would be good for me. I'm going to go with right here, I think, you guys. I definitely don't want to get my head in the video. It's close enough. <laughs> here we go. Get your corners down really good and your edges. And there is page one and two. And we've got some nice spacing. And we should look okay when we close the book. And we do. We're now on to page three.